The concept of a self-sufficient city on Mars in this era is no longer science fiction, but is increasingly closer to reality. Indeed, Elon Musk aims to build and operate the first Mars colony before 2050. This would require SpaceX to have about 800 to 1,000 starships per year for 10 years to create a construction fleet. And it will take 20 years to build such a city on Mars. I guarantee that dream will come true in the not-too-distant future as the company's engineers have been working around the clock to speed up the development of Starship and Raptor. That made such a strong impression that a NASA official exclaimed, They, SpaceX, build these things very fast. Their goal was seven engines a week, and they hit that about a quarter ago. So they are now building seven engines a week. Oh my God! One engine per day. Unbelievable. That's something we've never seen before. But that's not enough. Elon Musk even expects SpaceX to produce two to four Raptors per day, meaning double or quadruple the current speed to keep up with the goal of 800 to 1,000 starships per year. So how can SpaceX do that? Discuss everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. First of all, the most popular way to mass copy the Raptor is to iterate the rocket engine quickly and efficiently. The benefit of this approach is that it gives you more opportunities to experiment and fail. Take for example, during the process of upgrading the Raptor engine from V2 to V3, you have to conduct thousands of tests, including on the ground and sky. There will not be enough engines for you to do that unless you have a high production rate. In the worst case scenario where you don't have enough engine, you have to be cautious about whatever you intend to do and even not dare to blow them up. It leads to a lack of experience. Of course, the less experience, the less innovation. Iteration also helps shorten production time when the only thing you need to do is copy what you've already created. Thanks to that, engineers can optimize time, effort, and money, which explains why at SpaceX, everything is done as quickly as its rocket speed. However, copy only is not enough. Elon Musk also focused on the evolution of Raptor's design aiming to make it more lighter, easier, and cheaper to manufacture. Indeed, we have witnessed the development of the Raptor from V1 to V2 and now to V3. Although there are not many details surrounding the third generation, when comparing the first two versions, we can see that Raptor 2 is much lighter, easier, and cheaper to manufacture. As you know, SpaceX deleted a large part of the maze of primary, secondary, and tertiary plumbing. In 2022, CEO Elon Musk confirmed that SpaceX had even removed a complex torch igniter system for Raptor 2's main combustion chamber. All that simplification made Raptor 2 much easier to build in theory, and SpaceX's production figures have more than confirmed that theory. Despite those simplifications, SpaceX was also able to boost Raptor 2's thrust by 25% by sacrificing just 1% of Raptor 1's efficiency. Besides, Elon also wants to remove 3D printing technology on the Raptor as much as possible. You may be surprised because 3D printing is considered an effective technology that SpaceX applies to certain parts of the Raptor. However, it has some disadvantages, including increased costs and slowing down the production rate. The simple design also helps to reduce the cost. Raptor 2 is expected to be $1,000 per ton of thrust or $230,000 at Raptor 2's 230 tons of thrust. You can see, this change is very impressive as each early Raptor 1 prototype cost more than $2 million for what would turn out to be 185 tons of thrust or roughly $11,000 per ton. In addition to simplifying design and reducing costs, the company also focuses on product durability. Indeed, most of the metal parts and housing are made from special alloys. The company currently uses SX300 and in the future will apply the new type SX500. Referring to SX500, Elon said, The SpaceX metallurgy team developed the SX500 super alloy for 12,000 PSI oxygen-rich hot gas. It is very hard. Almost every metal turns to flame under those conditions. 
Both SX300 and 500 are single crystal super alloys, which are kind of a modern version of Inconel super alloys. They are already used regularly for industrial applications requiring the ability to reliably operate in extremely corrosive high pressure, high temperature environments for long periods. Most frequently seen in gas turbines for energy generation and airplane propulsion. For the most powerful rocket ever, like the Raptor, those alloys need to go a step further. Musk wants to develop its own SX300 and SX500 iterations to build a reliable, robust turbo pump for the Raptor propulsion system. Not that enough. The company completed a second manufacturing facility in McGregor, Texas, which is used to build more Raptor engines. It is the 4,280 acres of land, about halfway in between Dallas and Austin, just south of the city of Waco. This new, cutting-edge SpaceX factory located at the company's expansive McGregor, Texas rocket development and testing facilities factory will ultimately mass-produce between 800 and 1,000 Raptor 2 engines per year. Meanwhile, Raptor vacuum production will remain at SpaceX's Hawthorne, California headquarters alongside work on mysterious new experimental designs. In July 2021, SpaceX announced it would break ground soon, and by 2022, the facility was operational. On November 4 of the same year, SpaceX marked its 200th Raptor V2 engine, and all 200 of those engines were produced at SpaceX's factory and test facility in McGregor, Texas. That means the new factory has only been in operation for a few months but has already achieved a production rate of 200 units. Too impressed. Another record was achieved by the SpaceX team. Entering 2023 with upgrades in technology and production lines, we can completely consider the company's goal of two or four engines per day not out of reach. It's clear that producing and testing Raptor engines in one place not only cuts down on time and costs associated with long distance transportation, but also speeds up engine production. In short, SpaceX has enough conditions to accelerate Raptor production to the level they desire. Thanks to that, Raptor in the future can adapt to Starship's high cadence. At that time, this will be beneficial in shortening the distance between Earth and Mars, as well as helping America win the space race with China. Unlike the SLSE's RS-25 engine, in 2015, NASA awarded Aerojet Rocketdyne a $1.16 billion contract to restart production of the RS-25 engine. Again, that money was just to re-establish production facilities and not to build the engines. NASA is paying more than $100 million for each of those. The problem here is that Aerojet Rocketdyne's goal is to produce only four of these engines per year. It is considered very slow compared to SpaceX's Raptor and is not capable of keeping up with the high demands of the current rocket market, especially in the context that China plans to send astronauts to the moon before 2030 and they are making certain progress. So, of course, all attention now has been towards Elon Musk. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space-important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high-quality content. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.